A sunshed could mean different things to different people. Some people use the term to describe a greenhouse. Other people think of it as a shady place to escape harsh sunlight. I use the term to describe a ground-based shelter used to collect and store solar heat. If you are fortunate enough to have a roof pointed in the right direction and a basement large enough to install storage tanks, you will not need a sunshed. Most solar hot water systems have collectors mounted on a roof with storage tanks in a basement. The direct gain batch heater could also be mounted on a roof, but batch tank water may freeze in winter. If you live in southern Florida, a batch heater may be all you need to warm or preheat your water. Batch heaters are simple, passive collectors that combine the function of collecting and storing heat. They work fine in sunny areas that have moderate heating requirements, but in cold climates their efficiency drops and freezing problems are a concern. If you live in Maine, your batch heater may not survive the winter. To be practical in cold climates, collectors should be isolated from storage tanks. The actual distance between collector and storage is not as important as the insulation between them. Most people install their solar collectors on south-facing roofs, that is, if they live in the northern hemisphere. Unfortunately, not everyone is so blessed, and many who are so blessed would rather not secure collectors to their roof and install an insulated heat storage vault in their basement. A solar hot water sunshed is an alternative to roof-mounted collectors and basement storage tanks. It's the kind of animal that can both collect and store solar heat. It could be freestanding or it could be attached to the side of a house. All a sunshed user has to do is run insulated PEX lines to and from the coils inside the storage drums to the inlet of a conventional hot water heater, which would of course be inside the house. Actually, a solar greenhouse is similar to a sunshed in that the area of heat collection is isolated from the area of heat storage. A solar greenhouse uses floors, walls, and furniture to store solar heat. Basically, a solar greenhouse uses the air to transfer heat, and a sunshed uses water to transfer heat. Many solar home designs use simple passive solar greenhouses to heat their homes. But this passive heating method is not well regulated, so there may be large temperature swings within the house. Hello, my name is John Canavan, and my website is JC Solar Homes. This is one of my designs for a solar home. It's a fairly simple, simple heated uh, home and it's heated with uh, air. Uh, this is a solar greenhouse and it would be 40 feet long and 10 feet high. Glazing would be to 10 feet. So that's a surface area of about 400 square feet. So what happens is the air in the greenhouse is heated and as you know heated air rises. So it would rise to the peak of the greenhouse right here and it's concentrated so the heat it would get very very hot at this point uh, probably in excess of 180 degrees and there'd be a fan in the top of the greenhouse and this fan would blow the heated air into the house so this is a five bedroom two bathroom house uh, it measures about 80 feet long and it's 16 feet wide in the shortest position. Now you can see that there's a garage that's built right into the house and this would be a workshop also. A garage workshop. There'd be three bedrooms in this area and two bedrooms in this area and a couple bathrooms. Uh, probably be about a $500,000 house. So I don't expect you to uh, run out and 
and buy one of these right away. But, but these are the kind of houses that are possible. Uh, here's another one, here's another design. What makes this unique is the roof. You can see it's kind of an odd looking roof, but there's a way of building a roof like this. Nice little two bedroom house. Same concept, you, we're using a solar greenhouse and the heated air uh, is blown into the house, heats the furniture and the walls, and so that's how it works. Well, we're not going to build any of these houses today. We'll save that for another time. Today, we're going to assemble a model of a sunshed. And that's right over here. Get this out of the way here. the model of the sun, sunshed that we're going to build. It's already built, so we'll be disassembling it actually, so you can see how it's put together. We'll sort of be assembling it in reverse. Okay, I'm a little closer now. I'll try not to get in the way. It's hard to do this. You'll see me go in and out of focus. All right. Anyway, so this is a sunshed. And what you're looking at here, these are collectors. This particular sunshed is using MTD collectors, but you could use any kind of collector. Um, these would measure two feet by eight feet, each one of them. Okay. 1632. So that's uh, 64 square feet of, of glazing area. So the collectors are actually uh, put on the top and they, they actually form the roof. Okay? And you can do this with MTD collectors. If you were using different other kinds of collectors, you would sheathe the roof with plywood or, so, or something uh, to have a, a surface for mounting the collectors. But it's not necessary with MTD collectors. Anyway, so this is the basic structure. If you look inside, you'll see some storage drums. These represent 55 gallon drums and they're all connected in series. So the heated water, well, let's go back here, so the heated water would enter the first drum and then be filtered from one drum to the other. So uh, this is a method of stratifying the heat. It makes the process of heat collection more efficient. Anyway, let's take this apart little by little. This is the knee wall. We'll lift the knee wall up. Oh, let's, take the, let's take the drums out first. Remove the knee wall. So this is the knee wall, and you can see it's made by made with two by fours. There's only four two by fours needed to make this knee wall. One, two, and then this is another one, two. So that's four two by fours to make the frame. Fairly simple. And this is cut at an angle of 45 degrees. Uh, you can vary the, the pitch if you like, but that's a fairly common pitch. And these are the side walls. You'll need four two by fours to make the side wall frame. That's one side, that's the other one. They're uh, mirror images of each other. And that's, that's all you need. Uh, and then we have the back wall. The back wall would look like this, and this would this would be the door for the greenhouse here. Okay, the door, the door. Okay, and the entire uh, not the greenhouse. I'm sorry. The sun space would rest on a cement platform, and these represent cement blocks. Okay. And that's just to keep everything nice and nice and dry. Now we're going to need insulation for these drums. Now these drums are actually 
These represent uh, two and a half feet in diameter, but the actual drums are only two feet in diameter. So you, the actual drums were spaced like this, you'd have space left over. So on the sides, that's where you'd put uh, four inches of solid insulation, probably isocyanurate uh, on the front side and also the back side and the sides. And then for the, the top of the, the drums, you just put a piece of insulation. That's all you need to, to insulate the drums. Anyway, this is what I like to call a sunshed. And it, it's a method of collecting solar heat and also storing solar heat in the same structure. And you can extract the heat from the drums with, uh, with PEX tubes inserted inside the drums and run the PEX tube into your house. You have to insulate it, but you could use that to preheat your domestic hot water, or you could even use it for heating your home. This is a very small application. You're only using 64 square feet, but of course you could make it larger. But this just gives you the, displays the uh, concept. Okay, anyway, enough of the jabbering away. Now it's time for you to get busy and get started on a solar project as soon as possible. That's the hardest thing, is getting started. Once you get started, you'll be hooked. Okay, now we know how to build a sunshed. Uh, just a few other things I wanted to mention. If you are going to use uh, trickle-down collectors, what you'll need is a trickle-down distributor. And this represents a trickle-down distributor. So water is uh, distributed to all these collectors from the top. So after it's mounted, you, you would press in the trickle-down distributor into the collectors like that. So the water would trickle down from the top and go down, and then it would be collected in a gutter and go into the tanks. Okay, and the only other thing that's missing from this is a device that regulates the pump. The pump should only come on when there's heat available, and that's the job of the differential controller. And that controller could be as simple as this. This is a controller I make. It's called a basic differential controller. It can be used for an AC pump or a DC pump, and it senses the difference in temperature between the collector and the storage tank, and it will only come on when the, the temperature in this, the collector is higher than the temperature in the storage tank. And how much higher or how much lower, that's regulated with this uh, differential pot adjustment. Okay, so that's basically all there is to it. So, uh, time to get started on your, your solar project.